What do we got? <clears throat> Haven't done this in a week. I was a little busy. Nothing crazy, but a little busy. I thought the last one would hold people over, but I think it's got 15 views. Maybe this is a lost cause. I'm thinking it might be a lost cause. But I'm not going to give up. Why would people give up? I, under, I, I think I said that in the last video, the whole giving up thing. People give up way too quick. Again, it's not like I'm trying to get some sort of popularity contest out of this. It's, uh, it's just talking. I love, I love bullshitting. Something that I was brought up, like my, so my grandfather raised me until I was about five. I mean, my mom was in the picture, but most of my memories from like, I, I guess being born, not that you have many memories of being born, but till I was about five years old was uh, growing up with my, my grandparents. They watched me a lot. My mom worked, I think, two jobs. And uh, so he he owned a bar. And I spent a lot of time at the bar. And that has nothing to do with him or, uh, or, or his maybe grandparenting skills. I actually really enjoyed it. I would, uh, I'd sleep on the pool table in the morning while my grandmother cleaned. And uh, at night, I would stay there, and I'd always tug on his shirt. It'd be like 1 o'clock in the morning. And because he owned the place, he would go around bullshitting with everybody. And uh, I'd always tug on his shirt and say, come on, Pop, can we leave? And he'd always say, after this one, after this one. Well, before you know it, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, and well, he's driving me home. I, I guess you can understand the uh, <laughs> unsafe practice of that. Uh but it was a different time, you know, it was uh, late 80s, early 90s. It was different. But uh, I, I kind of got the, uh, he, I just, I, I, he would stand at the end of the bar and everybody would be around him listening to him, bullshitting with him. And it was incredible. Just the people that would come to hear him talk and the stories he would tell. And it was always entertaining. I could hear the same story. 15, 20, 25 times, and it would always entertain me. Up until the day he died, I would still listen to the stories that he would tell. Certain stories, they were like the monumental stories. And I think that's where I developed it from. I, I realized, like, not only did I want to emulate that, but at the same time, I felt this whole, especially in the military, having this weird, um, you know, you just you just talk. Like, you get a lot of free time. And you just talk to people, and you just, you get to know people, and you, and you learn their stories, and it was, and, and then going to the bar too, like once I was old enough to actually go to the bar and actually, and, and, and start talking to people and, and just meeting people, you go to the bar and it, whether you go with a group or you go solo, there's people in the bar that you've never talked to before. And how often do you see, I mean, I would really get into some good mood sometimes and you just look over and there'd be somebody standing there that you just start a conversation with. And I've done that in, in my traveling and in my experience over years and it was always incredible i mean sometimes some of the conversations would fall flat and they wouldn't go anywhere but that's fine but you'd still you'd still talk to somebody that you you had no idea any of their story any of their life you just thought that they were like a cut and paste person that you know if there's seven billion people on this planet most of them are going to be copy and paste people they're going to just going to blend in with the crowd you're, you're not going to know anything about them you're just going to imagine that they're just like the matrix like you're just going to walk around the matrix and there's going to be that one girl with a red dress that you're going to be like oh yeah i get it this one's in, this one's special this one's important but everybody else just blends in with the crowd but if you actually take time to actually you know, just make an attempt and everybody's too shy everybody has this weird like oh i'm too nervous or uh i'm i'm too um what's it called uh uh, an introvert. I'm an, I'm an introvert, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go to a social gathering where people get alcohol, but I'm not gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna talk to people. I'm just gonna stay by myself and wait for somebody to talk to me. That doesn't work. It it that, that's not how life goes. You you have to kind of make an attempt, and same goes for everybody else. It's not always on everybody else's shoulders to make that attempt, but if if you want to get things moving or you want to meet people or if you want to um, I, I guess, uh, gain perspective or, or, or get any kind of outside, um, I, I don't know, just input, just making friends. How many people go around trying to make friends? Everybody's got friends on the internet. Everybody's got friends on Facebook, uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and, and Twitter and all that crap. 
But and again, I'm not the first person to say this, but how many of those friends do you actually know or do you actually stay in contact with? Um, I got plenty of people that are on my Facebook and on my Instagram that are considered friends, uh, people I went to high school with. I don't, I don't actually like stay in contact with them and and talk to them on a regular basis enough to know that uh, what's current in their life. And, uh, and to actually consider them friends, I, can, I consider them acquaintances, people that I've known from my past. Um, I guess it's also like if you know if you graduated with somebody in high school, or you went to high school with somebody, or even college, if you graduated with somebody, you're always going to have that that weird like they're not a stranger, but they're not a friend kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense, but that doesn't mean I'm I'm not going to invite you over. You know, for my for my birthday party or or for a New Year's Eve party, uh, but then again, do you actually make that attempt? Do you actually make that that effort? You know, and uh, I, I don't think it. I don't think it does. I don't think many people do. Everybody wants it to come to them. Everybody wants it to come and fall in their lap. Uh, even with like relationships, people just expect. Uh, they they go around doing this whole sappy. Oh, I'm just alone and and nobody likes me and and uh I'm going to be alone forever, especially women. You hear women after they get to a certain age they're like, "I'm going to be alone forever." What are you doing to to <laughs> to to combat that? What are you doing to uh, effectively change that? Probably nothing. They just sit around, "Oh, I can't meet a good guy." Well, what are you doing to meet a good guy? What are you just waiting around Oh well, uh, you know, I dressed like this, and I went out to the bar, and I sat there, and and uh, and and nobody came up to me. Who says it's the guy's responsibility? Look, this isn't 1920, this isn't 1910. Guys ain't just coming back off the ship from World War One. Like this is not. Uh, times have changed. It's okay for you to make the attempt to go up and actually introduce yourself to a guy. And I, and I, I thought about this before. When a girl goes up to a guy, you get the most brutal answer. A, a brutal answer. And, and the most real answer that you will ever get from a guy, if a girl walks up to a guy and she goes, hey, are you single? Do you want to get to know me? Something along those lines. It doesn't have to be that direct, but something along those lines. Like, hey, you know, are you with anybody? You want to have a drink? The guy, he's going to get totally blown his game, whatever game he had, if he had any game, if he had any kind of game plan. And you're going to get the most brutal, honest answer out of him possible either he's gonna he's gonna break down because he's he's a chump and he's gonna be like oh i wasn't expecting this uh uh uh, uh no i i don't know what to do I'm, I'm i'm just gonna sit here or you're gonna be like um yeah sh- sh- sure yeah I'll, absolutely i'll come over and join you for a drink or whatever it wants to be but i feel like women they just have this this mentality that men are s- designed to approach them first or that's something that they were taught, or something that their their mothers, um, I, I guess, buried deep in their their frontal lobe of their of their brain, that a man should approach them first, and a man should do this, and a man should do that, and a man should do that. But women are just, and I'm not saying this as like a bad thing towards women. I'm just letting you know that that times have changed. And if a woman wants to go out and approach a man, it's okay. It's acceptable. It's absolute. And with all this, uh, you know, uh, Tinder and and uh, uh, plenty of fish and and these dating apps and uh, whatever the hell else is out there, it's there. There's a lot of promiscuity, promiscuousness, promiscuousness, promiscuity, promiscuity, something along those lines. But if you go out and, and, and guys are known to be this whole fuck boy thing and, and guys are just supposed to go out and, and, and have multiple partners, but girls are doing it too. But I'm just saying that if you're worried about that and, you know, a lot of girls are worried about the whole, um, you know, they don't want just another fuck boy. But if you go out and you actually approach a guy, you're going to get the brutal answer out of him. And you might be shocked. You might be a little... um. I don't I don't know what the word is, just kind of happy, surprised maybe, because that guy's going to be thrown off guard. That guy is going to be totally blindsided. Any kind of routine he had set in his head, any kind of confidence he had set in his head, 
prior to you coming up and talking to them, it's going to be totally uh, avoided by you. And you're going to get him, his his true self, his true answer. Um, and I, tr- I truly believe that. But yeah, you can't just sit behind a computer and expect to have friends and, and uh, oh, you know, this person liked my post. So that means that they'll, they'll come to my baby shower. No, that's not how it works. You have to really go out there and connect with the pe- with the world, with with people in general. Just yeah, I just I I I don't know. I, I I used to have this time in my life where I loved going out to bars and just meeting people and just talking to people. And then I got kind of sour. I got a little uh I got a little reserved and I was like, "You know what? A lot of people suck." And I feel like I'm not the only one that thinks that way. Like, I think people suck to an extent. Some people are just D-bags and just assholes and just for no reason. Like, the, everybody's entitled to something and they're better than the next person. Look, I will tell you, I'm not better than anybody. I, to uh, pedophiles and murderers and all that stuff, but to, there, there's a there's a line where I draw, in this, where I will not look at another man and be or a woman and be like, I'm better than you. Because I understand that I have my flaws too and I have my, my moments too. But if you go around acting like you're better than somebody, and that really comes to, it comes full circle because I say that a lot of the, I got I got to change full circle crap. Um, but the the really something that's been annoying me is this whole, and, and I'm 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 happy for you. You want to go out and you want to compete in in um in competitions and bodybuilding competitions and physique competitions. Go go ahead, just don't walk around the gym like you're somebody that deserves to be there over somebody else. Whether you got that 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 uh guy who's never worked out a day in their life and they're in there for the first time trying to get a workout in or you got that guy that, you know, he runs marathons. Uh you, you know, maybe annually or biannually or triannually, whatever it is. What whatever Boston, New York, uh Washington DC, whatever the marathon may be that they go out and do, but that's their type of workout. But just don't walk around with your stupid fucking face and your stupid, your gym bag and and give people dirty looks for being in your way. And then on top of that, because I haven't named this person yet because it really just drives me absolutely bonkers because she looks like shit. She looks like, actually there's multiple, there's two or three of them that look like absolute garbage. And they, they, all they do is, is post on, on their Instagram or whatever the hell they got. And it's just, Oh, you know, get out of my way and you're, and you're bothering me and all this. And it's like, dude, you don't like, and I've said this before. Like I pay rent here too. I pay my fees, my membership here too. And my goals are way different than yours. I, I don't know what your goals are, to be honest with you. I have absolutely zero. I mean, there are some that just want to stand on stage in a bikini and then what? Oh, look how many calories I ate today. 400. Okay. Like, the how the amount of calories I take in is different because what I'm training for is different. I it's just I'm hopefully hopefully going to a, a military school here soon. Again, I'm training for that. But uh, even if I wasn't, I was I still wouldn't be doing anything different. I go to the gym a minimum of five days a week because of what it's my lifestyle. It's what I want. But this person, this one in particular, that is absolutely annoying. And then she, you know, it's just. Everything just, just looking at her, just, you can just tell this, this, she's just pissed off at life. And it's like, I didn't do that to you. And I, I just, I actually made it a, a game of it. I, I try to find certain things. Like I don't go out of my way to do it, but I'll, I'll purposely find s- stuff that like, oh yeah, I wonder if she's going to go for that piece of equipment. Cause that's on next on my list. And I'm going to go get that piece of equipment. And if we're going at the same time, I'm not going to be polite about it. I'm going to try to get in her way just to piss her off. I feel like it's a game. Like there's certain people in life that they're so, they're so miserable that no matter what it is, you, you, you couldn't find something to make that person happy. And there's, it's, they, they, I think they, they enjoy being miserable and they get this level of attention that comes in with their, their misery where they, they get, they actually get the opposite. Like, they're they're so miserable that they seek attention for their misery. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Like, oh look how look how upset I am and pissed off I am today. And then let's see how many likes I can get by that. Like, no, I don't. Like, why would you want that kind of negativity in your life? That doesn't make any sense to me. What's my dog doing? Hey, lay down. But you got all this all this positivity around you. People, especially in a first world country, oh, the gym was packed today, so I'm going to be upset. What the fuck? 
kind of bull crap is that? Like, what what kind of first world problems do you have? Like, go experience some culture. Go. I can't understand that for the life of me. This whole, oh God, it, I had this convers where yeah, I kind of had this conversation with somebody recently about the whole military. Like, I, in a way, and I'm 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 against it, and I'm for it in certain different aspects. But the whole like mandatory military service in this country, like some countries across, around the world have mandatory military service. Like either you join the military or you go to college, or you leave the country. Like there, there, it's either one of those options, two of those options, or a combination of those options, or whatever it might be. But my problem with it is that if you join the military, and I'm not saying that the, mil- the, the military is the only way. Like you can go to college, you just travel across the country, get a different perspective, experience different cultures. I remember going down my first time down in uh, North Carolina that I wasn't actually like in training. We actually had some like off time. It was uh, it was uh, New Year's Eve 2006. And my buddy that I ended up serving with for a while, Levens, I'll, I'll, I'll tag you. Well, I don't think you're on Instagram, but I'll tag you. Um, I'll tag you on Facebook. Um, Levens, we ended up going to, uh, we, gr- we ended up graduating boot camp, going to MCT together, uh, ended up becoming roommates in California together, and then, uh, got stationed together in the same unit. Roommates again, deployed together, came back roommates together, and then I got off active duty before he did. Um, but it was, uh, this late December 2006, and I checked in the Camp Lejeune and, he checked in too, and we were on a holiday weekend. And he's like, "Hey, what are you doing? You know, do you have a car? What, whatever. Uh, do you want to come uh, to Asheville, North Carolina, with me?" And I was like, "Yeah, absolutely, I'll go." So he took me to Asheville, his home. <clears throat> and I remember I showed up, and like the way I grew up was uh, was like, you know, you can hang out with your friends, and I've I've been the uh, uh, I, I guess the host and the guest of this experience, but and I, I think it goes for a lot of people in this area in the Northeast that when dinner dinner time came, if you were playing with your friend, if you had a friend over, your friend left and then you ate dinner. And then after dinner was over, you went out and you played with your friend again. If it was that time of year, if it was light out or wh- whatever it may be, if you were close enough. But when dinner came around, your friend, you it, that was your time to eat and your friend went home. And I remember a buddy of mine, I'd be over at his house, excuse me, I'd be over at his house and it would be his dinner time. And it was, I had to leave. There were very few, a few occasions where his, his parents actually fed me, which I didn't, I didn't see it as like, that was supposed to happen. I was like, yeah, I'll leave. Or I was like, I'll just hang out in the living room until you're done eating. So we can keep playing like whatever it might be. Um, but again, like, that's what I thought it was like, I thought that was like how it was across America. Like I I didn't know any different, at least that's the way it was in my house and, uh, in my, in my buddy's house. But, uh, but when I got down North Carolina, my, you know, Levins took me to, uh, to his home in Asheville. And I remember I got to his house and one of the first things his mom or dad said was like, you hungry? Like you want to eat? And I explained this to him. I think it was like the next morning at breakfast because they gave me hog jaw. I never had hog jaw before. But um, it's just like a big, thick piece of bacon. I mean, again, you heard my—I don't like bacon, but it was—it was different. It was cool. Uh, but yeah, so I, I explained it. I was like, you know, up north, like when dinner time comes around, like that's time for your friends to go home, or time for you to leave your friend's house so they can eat. And they—they kind of looked at me and they were just like, "No, that's not how we do it down here." And I was just kind of—I was kind of like in awe. I was like, "Oh, there's, there's." different cultures even here in America like I didn't know there was different ways of life here I was very naive as as a young as a young marine as a young uh just kid in the world I did a lot of stupid shit and I didn't I didn't know a lot of I didn't know a lot of things that made me stupid for that matter but yeah if you don't have a whole lot of culture you don't have a whole lot of experience in the world and this goes back to the whole military service mandated serving whatever I feel like it would be good because it would teach people that, hey, you can go without. You can you can absolutely not have your you know, the the customer's always right. You can you can go without that crap because you join the military, regardless of what branch it is, Marines, Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, whatever. Uh you know, all your all your wants go out the window. Like your needs are there. Like you'll get food and you'll get water and you know, you'll get your sleep occasionally. But 
oh, I don't care that you want, you know, uh, you know, you want a soda or that you want, um, you know, you want to put on some pajama pants or, or that you weren't first in line for this or, or that your cell phone's not working. Like that, that shit goes out the window. Like they don't give a flying crap about that. But the problem with my whole man, you know, the whole mill is because, I mean, you even have it now. You have some really, really shitty, um, service members and i feel like if you got if it was mandated you would have these kids that come in and they would just have terrible terrible attitudes and they wouldn't want to do it and uh it would just really like water down the actual good service members and uh and you just have these assholes that didn't want to do it and uh, i think that would just be i think it would it would be really bad that you would have these kids that came in just with no manners they didn't want to do it you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to trust them. Like the good ones wouldn't be able to trust the crappy ones because they would just be like, yeah, I'm getting out. And then you would have all kinds of different, um, oh man, just like, so like the problem in the military is like you get, it's, it's this, you get mass punishment. And I didn't realize that when I joined, like nobody told me about that. Nobody forewarned me about like any kind of mass punishment. But I remember we had a kid, <laughs> we had a kid in boot camp. It was my first taste. It was my absolute first taste of mass punishment. Like I've had a little bit of experience before, but it didn't click in. But this kid, um, it was at night. We were all supposed to be sleeping and like, yeah, you can get up and use the bathroom if you have to pee. Uh, and this kid went into the bathroom and I guess he tried slitting his wrist. Well, I didn't know it. I was dead asleep. I was so exhausted in boot camp. And, uh, so the next morning we wake up and our drill instructors put us online. That's where we just stand in front of our bunks. And uh, our senior drill instructor comes out and he starts yelling at us. And uh, he goes, uh, you know, somebody tried to slip their wrist in the bathroom last night. He's like, everybody get out. And we had this big sandbox. And when I say a big sandbox, I mean, like, it was probably about, you know, 60 feet long and, and maybe uh, 30 or 40 feet wide. It was a giant rectangle it's rectangle filled with sand that you could fit 70 guys in. And uh, he took us outside. I remember, it was still dark. It was like 4 a.m., 4.30 a.m. And... Uh, He's smoking us, you know, we're doing push-ups, uh, jumping jacks, uh, mountain climbers, uh, flutter kicks, whatever it might be. And I had, I, I really didn't have any idea like why we were doing it. And then he stopped us. I mean, we were, this is after like 20 minutes and we're like, we're all smoked. We're all gassed. We're all sweaty. We just woke up and we're full of sand. And, uh, you know, he goes, uh, you know, this kid tried slitting his wrist. And the reason that you're being punished is because the, um, we, we have, people that stay up all night that they have like, sh like, like, sh like guard shifts kind of thing. Like even in boot camp and the squad, it's just teaches you like what you're supposed to do. Um, yeah. You know, when you get out to actually like with your unit and whatnot, if you're, especially if you're overseas, kind of how it will go. And to make sure like nobody tries to like, I don't know, running away or whatever it might be. But anyway, um, they're supposed to watch people and that's like their whole job. And these kids didn't watch this kid go into, uh, into the bathroom and cut his wrist and we were all getting punished for that and it was it was just this, this mass punishment it was like one person screws up everybody screws up uh we had another kid later in boot camp that um the his m we got mres and uh his mre got m&ms in it peanut m&ms to be exact and uh when the drill instructor said to throw all your mre trash away uh he kept the m&ms and he got caught eating it in the bathroom or something like that, maybe like an hour or two later. And our whole platoon had to once again, go back to this giant sandbox and, uh, do a bunch of calisthenic exercises. And, uh, while this kid ate the rest of his M&Ms and, uh, that was just like the, that was like the theme of boot camp. It was just mass punishment, but it goes back to the whole, um, you know, a mandatory service, uh, you know, you know, if that would ever be applied, which I'm not saying this is like a current event. I'm not saying that this is like in the news or anything. I'm just going back to this, this lady at the gym, just like she has nothing. She's just miserable all the time. Like, and she spends hours, hours, hours at a time at the gym and just looking at her. Like I actually get some sort of pleasure from seeing how miserable she fucking looks because she's just a, I'm sure she might be a nice lady, but God damn, like I, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, just, and that's just like people in general, people in general, the, the ones that walk around with like this weird, like, um, it's hard to imagine that they've experienced anything bad enough 
that they can be that miserable and that much of a cunt bag to do stupid, like just just walk around with them. I'm just angry all the time, and I can't believe I didn't get my Whopper on time, and I had to sit that long in the drive-through. Really? That's what you're fucking complaining about? Like when there's good gravy, like there there there's there's a lot more bad shit in the world, and and I feel like if especially in like these first world countries like America, if we just took a step back and realized how good we have it, man, things would be a lot better. But uh yeah, actually talking about that, I've been I've been watching this vet TV um a little bit. It's on YouTube. Uh but yeah, this this vet TV and it's created by I I think he was a lieutenant or maybe a captain in the Marine Corps. I think his real name's Mar or Maher, or Mar, or like Bill Maher, or something like that, anyway, um, but his, his channel goes by Donnie O'Malley, and uh, I, I don't know too much about him, but I did watch one of his videos um, that had something to do with, I guess he was like trying to prevent veteran suicide, and he he made a comment about like, you know, don't go around being like, Oh, oh, uh, woe is me, and and pity me, and and look how upset I am, and and uh, and it was something along those lines. Just like, and it, the funny thing is, like, I did it too when I got off active duty. Like, I was in a dark spot. I didn't. Oh, I got to take a sip of my captain. But yeah, I was in a dark spot because I got off active duty, and, and and he says it in this video, like, oh, you get off active duty, you leave your unit. And, uh, oh, you don't have a sense of purpose anymore. Like I really did. Like I, I was, I was screwed up. I was really screwed up and, um, I, I didn't know what to do. So I, I went out and I drank a lot. I tried to get laid a lot and I didn't want to go home. I like sleep scared me. Like it, the whole idea of sleep and, um, just like being in the dark alone. Like it was, it really kind of messed me up. And I mean, when, when I got back from Iraq, I was a little screwed up too. I uh, I was drinking um, nearly a bottle of Crown Royal every night. I would I would go to the I would go to work. Well, I go I PT, go to the work, go to work, go to the gym, and then I would leave the gym, go to the PX or uh, um, you know the seven day store or whatever it might be, and uh, I would get a bottle of Crown a night. And I still had deployment money, so. $25 a night. That wasn't much. And I would get a cherry Pepsi. And it was like a liter of cherry Pepsi. I wasn't exactly worried about fitness at the time. And uh, I would finish that between the hours of 7 and 10. And there was one time where I actually knocked on one of my Lance Corporal's doors because I knew he he always kept Coors Light. And I knocked on his door and uh, I said, hey, man, like I'm out. Like, can I get some Coors Light from you? So I drank, you know, a whole thing of Crown Royal. I don't know what that maybe like uh, I, I don't I don't know what the uh, a quart I don't, I don't know what the the size amounts is, uh, but yeah I knocked on his door and, and he gave me two uh, two cores lights and I went back and I finished that and uh, so yeah I mean I had and uh, again like I would put it I would drink that I would go to go to sleep at eleven o'clock at night and I'd wake up at four a.m ready to roll. Like it was amazing. I kind of wish I had those abilities now. That's crazy. I can't do that now. I can't drink a whole bottle of crown Royal and wake up at 4am and be like, okay, let's go PT. Like it was amazing when you're 21, man, I wish I had some of those powers. But my point here, it just, I, I was screwed up. I had some, some issues and, and again, it went away for a while. Um, and then it came back when I had to get off active duty and it was like the same thing. Like I was like, I don't have a purpose. Like I was really depressed. And, uh, this guy said that this, this, this O'Malley guy, um, or Donnie, I'll just call him Donnie. Um, he said, he's like, yeah, then find another purpose. And I really did. Like, I didn't go to like any support group. I didn't go to any kind of, um, I don't know. I, I didn't have like a life changing experience. I just kind of thought to myself, I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just uh, like, yeah, am I depressed? Do I want things to change? Well, what am I doing about it? And I got a job and I just kind of like, I looked at myself in the mirror a few times. Again, it wasn't like one moment that was like, hey, there's, here's this moment of clarity and boom, like it, that's it. Everything changed. Um, it was more like uh, over a little bit of time, I was like, you know, stop. 
I noticed all my sentences were starting when I talked to somebody at the bar or, or wherever it was. All my sentences started with, well, when I was in Iraq or when I was in the Marine Corps or when I was on an active duty. Um, and I was like, who the, who can relate to that? Like, I'm talking to my friends and I have to remind them every time that I served. Like, that's just dumb. So I was like, stop telling people that you're in the service or were in the service or that you served. Like, nobody cares about that. And then I realized, I was like, what am I, what am I really upset at? Like I got life to live. Like I have opportunities. I can do whatever I want. Like, I don't need a specific, Hey, I'm serving the United States purpose. Like I can do other stuff. I can just be a normal guy. Like millions and millions of Americans live normal lives with, they they all have their own purpose and it has nothing to do with serving their country. And, uh, I thought, well, I can be like that too. So I actually developed this concept that I was like, I'm just going to be a normal guy. And that's what I did. I actually, well, it sounds stupid, but I, I, I got a job overseas working in Afghanistan. And, but my whole time over there was like, I'm just a regular guy. Like I worked out, I watched what I, I, um, I, I educated myself. But even when I came home, even when I came home in 2014, I was like, I'm just a regular guy. Like, I don't want to be anything special. I don't want to be anything crazy. I don't want to be anything. And it, that, that whole time, that whole process was just this weird, um, it was actually re like recovery. I was just like, nah, I don't need to be special. I don't need to, to constantly bring up the fact that I served. I don't need to constantly be reminded. Uh, I don't need bumper stickers on my car that say like Marine Corps or, or I, I ended up switching to the army in 2011. I don't need stuff saying I'm in this unit or, um, and another thing I avoided too was, which was funny was I was at the bar the one night and this kid came up to me and, uh, uh, I think I was still in the Marine Corps. I think I was in the Marine Reserves. And, uh, he came up to me and he's like, yeah, I'm in the army. And I started talking to him and he goes, yeah, I had my, uh, you know, he's like, I'm an E6 and I had my, my E5s, my sergeants, um, in the front lean and rest position. And then he started telling me like deployment stories. And I, I kind of looked at him and I was like, I don't, I, I was like entertaining him. But at the same time, like this, this crazy click went into my head. Like, I don't care. Like nobody pays attention to those guys. Well, I stopped. Another thing too, was like, I stopped hanging out at the VFWs. VFWs, American legions. I stopped hanging out at those. Cause I was like, I don't want to hear war stories for like, I don't want that to be, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, I praise any veteran anywhere, um, for any service that they've done any, especially the old guys that have done some, you know, the Vietnam, the Korea, the world war two, whatever it might be. Um, Hey, we're all veterans. We all, we all did our job. That's what it comes down to, but I'll, I'll never discredit anybody from doing that. But I realized that, at such a young age, at the age that I, I was 25, 26 at the time, I that, I don't want that to be what I'm remembered for. If I had died on that day and I looked at my gravestone from like a, from my, my ghost's perspective or whatever, whatever, whatever I could, if I could ever see my gravestone, I'm pretty sure somebody would have been like, oh, this guy talked about Iraq all the time. So let's put something on that. I didn't want that. Like, that's not what I wanted to be remembered for. Like, I don't want to be the guy that graduated high school, joined the Marine Corps, deployed to Iraq and then died. Like, that's all I talked about. Like, that's just some dumb shit. I was like, no, I want to be, I want to do other things in life. Like, I want to be remembered for other stuff. Like, not just that. And I think that's what a lot of these guys do. They get off active duty. And again, with this this, uh, this Donnie guy, like, he was saying, like, stop stop making your, like, crying little whiny, like, uh, I, I don't have a job and my wife left me and I, I'm a veteran, so I'm going to kill myself. Like, no. like Find something else. Do something. Like, your life's not over. Like, do other stuff. Stop. And I really feel like if you just stop emphasizing so much on your service, because nobody cares. Go ahead, go walk through the mall right now. Go, uh, go walk through the park. Um, you know, drive down I ninety five or or I five, whatever side of the country you're living on right now, and see how many people actually stop you to thank you for your service. Go ahead, dress in your dress blues or or your fucking, you know, your ACUs or your OCPs or whatever the fuck you got on, uh, whatever your dress uniform is, and see how many people actually come up to you. And, and thank you for your service. Probably not as many as you probably think. Yeah, they're all going to look at you because, oh, another service member. Like, America is is done with war. Like, we've been at war since 2001. Like, we're still overseas, but nobody cares. Everybody cares about, uh, you know, where, where, where the, the next, um, I don't know, the next Kardashian is going to date, which basketball player she's going to date or, or 
or the next time Kanye West is going to go on a uh, TMZ rant about President Trump or, or black people or something like that. Whatever the entertainment might be this week, that's what they care about. They don't care about the war. They're, they're so immune to it. Um, it's just get over this whole and actually um, I'm going to tag this guy because I don't know too much about this next guy, but um, John Burke. I watched a little bit about him. Uh, I, I know he was in that, that John Cena show, and uh, I remember his drill sergeant rants, and I thought he was kind of a douche for a while, but then I watched some of his videos. I, he's just a very like a very conservative taste, which the, I, I lean towards some of the stuff he says, um, but he just posted something tonight on Instagram about uh, how he thought for a moment when he got he was leaving his unit. And, uh, and, and, and went to drill sergeant school and how he, he made a mistake and he thought about ending it. Like, again, I was in a dark place, but to, to end it. And I mean, he made the right decision because I mean, look what, if he had ended it, if he had, well, there's a hair from, if he had ended it when he did, he wouldn't be where he is today. He wouldn't have got to experience the stuff that he has today. And I feel like Anything and, and this go and I'm I'm tying this in with Anthony Bourdain and and Kate Spade, and uh, well let's go back to Chris Cornell and uh, Chester Benningfield, or wait Bennington, Bennington, and uh, you know I, I, all the way back to Robin Williams. But like this whole like suicide thing, like I don't get it, and it's just it sucks because the of course celebrities get more attention than the veterans do, but veterans are committing suicide. But good gravy, they're, they're, it's not that bad. It's you, you go and, and my girlfriend told me this too. Like they think it is, but even the radio show I listened to in the morning, um, they said, you know, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And if John Burke would have done what he'd done over something, I'm pretty sure he's happy now. Like, yeah, it's, it sucks that, you know, your ex-wife or, you know, you took your kid and, and really that is shitty, but looking back on it, if you would, do you, do you, are you happy you didn't make that decision? Absolutely. I would imagine you are. I would have fucking imagined you are. Like, yeah, we all did horrible, whatever it might have been. We all, we, we have all done some bad shit. Nobody here is innocent. Nobody on earth is innocent unless you're Gandhi or the Pope, which I'm not even sure the Pope is fucking innocent. Uh, everybody here has done something wrong and somebody's morally ethical values perspective one way or another even in your own even everybody has now the problem with veterans and everything and going overseas and doing what we do and then coming home i don't know where that disconnect is like yeah i was screwed up too like i came home i would cry for no reason i was scared of the dark i could i remember driving down i-95 coming from pennsylvania going back down to north carolina and i got really bad tunnel vision i couldn't see anything outside of my headlights and I, I remember I called my mom and I was crying on the phone. I was drive I was going like 80 miles an hour on I-95 South through, I think it was in Virginia. And uh, she's like, just pull over, just pull over. And I actually started driving faster because I was like, ah, the faster I get back to base, the faster that this nightmare ends. But I, I just couldn't understand it. And uh, it took me, it took me about a year before I was like out of it. And I was like, why was I like that? And so there is something that psychologically breaks inside of you, but no, at no point was I like, yeah, a gun sounds like the way to do this or, or ending my life sounds. No, because I, there's always a tomorrow there, at least in our lifetime. I heard something about in 200 million years or 200,000 years that earth days will be 25 hours long. And I'm, I don't know how close to the sun will be or, or what kind of ozone layer we're going to have at that moment. But as of, as of right now, as of right in the 21st century, there's always a tomorrow. There will always be another day, another opportunity, another chance, another option. That's what it is. Options, options, people, options. I don't understand why, who, who goes through, I guess it's that whole pessimistic thing. Like you go through life thinking, no, there's only one option. I have to do this. Like that chick at the gym, like, Oh, there's only one option. I just have to go to this gym and I just have to deal with these people and be miserable. No, you don't. You can actually wake up that morning, punch yourself in your fucking ugly mug and be like, Oh, I'm going to put on a smile today and go in there and actually say hi and be polite to somebody instead of looking like a fucking cunt. C U N T long on the T T T T T T T T T good gravy. But there's always an option, and John Burke. I'm glad because because I'm I just started following you not that long ago, and uh, yeah, I mean I'm sure that you're happy, and, and 
Christ, man, there's there's plenty of people that have screwed up, and and the, the, another thing is like there's plenty of people that have and I, I, with Anthony Bourdain. I didn't even watch his show. I I mean I knew about him, but I didn't watch his show. I I don't really I don't I don't get much time to watch a whole lot of uh, various TV. I can, when I do watch TV, I'm kind of set in what what channels I watch or, or whatever. I like America's Got Talent and The Simpsons. It's about it. I think Deadpool's on right now. Uh but yeah, I never I never really watched the Anthony Bourdain show until he died actually this past weekend. Um or uh, yeah, was it this past weekend or was it last night or something like that? Either way, whatever it was. Yeah, I started watching the show. And uh, I was like it's actually kind of good, but I'm like you look at this guy and it kind of shows that, you know, no matter how much money you have, uh no matter what kind of fame or stardom you have or, or kind of and that guy was w- one of the most culturally uh, experienced people on earth. Uh, you know, he got to travel on his show to every continent, uh, experience numerous cultures, numerous people, numerous ways of life, numerous foods, and, and uh, have all that eclectic tastes and, and experience. And uh, he still decided that his depression was too much. But at... at at what point do you get to the, the uh, like that it can't change? I guess I'm just I'm not that kind of person. I used to be a really negative person. Um, uh, for for um, in my dark times, like I was negative, but I I never got to the point where I thought that there was not another option, that there was not another chance, that there was, and uh, and even like in my relationships when I broke up with girls, uh, it was funny because I was always like, even if I was mad at them, I was like, nah, there's always another chance. Like you can always redeem yourself, unless you're talking about drug addicts. And I don't think that drug addicts can redeem themselves. If that, if that, that, that's my opinion. If you don't agree with it, go fuck yourself. But I really do think that if you give a drug addict one chance, and they fuck it up, you don't give them a second chance. That's just you're just asking for trouble. They got to fix it themselves. They got to want to fix it. But yeah, this Anthony Bourdain thing and these miserable people and not having uh, any kind of optimism about them they're just constantly negative constantly down you got to cut those people out those are i didn't hear this word until i joined the army it was from my recruiter that uh and not that not that she recruited me i went to her she just turned out to be the fucking recruiter that ended up taking on my uh my contract but uh toxic i didn't hear that word until i joined the army but there are a lot of toxic people out there and i didn't know what she it was like one of those like new slang words like lit or savage like, what are you talking about? Like, where are these words coming from? And uh, I didn't know what she meant by toxic. She's like, yeah, toxic. And, uh, yeah, she told me that she's like, oh, you know, toxic leadership. And, and I just realized that there's toxic people in the world, just people that are negative and they just, they'll contaminate you. Like, they'll, they'll just bring you down. It didn't really uh, didn't really kick in until I started really seeing people like that. And I, and I experienced it like this girl at the gym. But yeah, going back to that, man, these these people that think that, oh, uh, I deserve this over, you know, I'm not going to get into that because not a lot of people here, if, if you do, then you know what I'm talking about. I don't need to explain it. But Jesus Christ, these these entitled people that, that think that, uh, oh, it's just for me and, and, uh, and just, and taking these selfies in the, me- I wanted to, I wanted so bad, these selfies, like, are you working out? Like, I, I don't go to the gym to take selfies. I'm pretty sure everybody's fucking ho- home or apartment or condo or, or room and board that they're renting out or they're, they're, they're paying fees for, whatever it might be, comes equipped with a mirror. Use that mirror instead of the, the ones at the gym. Like, I'm tired of walking through the, the bathroom at the gym and seeing these dudes with their shirts off trying to get the perfect lighting and the perfect angle and the perfect po- posing. And it's like, dude, what are you, what are you doing this for? Like that, have I taken selfies in the gym before? Absolutely, I have. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say I've never done it. But I don't do the same shit over and over and over. There's this one girl, it was her first competition, and she has a... I, I, I'm a judgmental person. I've said this in a previous episode. She's got a butt-ass fucking face. She is ugly as shit. But she was going to do her fucking first, first competition, and she was posting, I think, daily or, or, or bi-daily, if that's a... Every other day... On Instagram, hey, here's uh, here's my progress tonight. Totally killed buys today. Totally killed shoulders. Got a shoulder pump going on. 
Uh, and then there was another one too. Oh God, that's fu- uh, Let me teach you about hamstrings today, and then get fucking Google pictures, images of hamstring diagrams and shit. And then try to tell me about BCAAs, but couldn't fucking tell me what branch chain amino acids were. She didn't know what BCAAs meant. She's like, oh, let me know you. Let me show you. How BCAAs are good. You can like drink them like all day long, and like they replenish like amino acids lost. No, they don't. They only replenish three, and they're not even the the important ones. Like they're just like meh. They're like eh, branch chain amino acids. They only give you really like three, but there's nine total. Oh, so you don't know what the fuck you're talking about? And I just said this like my last drill, too. I said, stop dishing out shitty information. If you don't know what the fucking information is and you haven't t- taken the, the, the minuscule amount of time to actually research the information, which is not hard because, again, your phone comes equipped to that kind of technology to actually research the information that you're thinking about and actually get it into actually logical sense and distribute that information as, uh, I, I, I guess, trustworthy. Don't distribute it because it's shitty information. It's really fucking horrible information. And then you have other retards out there that don't, they don't want to put the time and research in on themselves. And they'll just hear what you say because a video is easier to watch than reading a book. Because we all fucking know that picture books are more fun than non-picture books. But you're going to go out there and just read some or, you know, hear somebody talk on a, on a, on a video on Instagram and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Branch chain of me or no, that, not even brand, BCAAs because they're good that you can drink them all day. Like, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's really the, the, the purpose of it. Oh, you know, let's just take creatine all day. Oh, is it just water weight? Well, yeah, it is, but you have to take the right creatine because if you want to get the right result. Okay, well, which creatine is that? Hmm, I don't know. I just know that you're supposed to take creatine. Okay, well, then you're fucking stupid. You're not, you're not trustworthy at all. But you have morons out there that are like, oh, this person must know what they're talking about because they're using big multi-syllable words. No, it's bullshit, shitty fucking information. Stop distributing that shit. God damn it. These fucking... And I, 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 this is my true belief. They don't have life skills. If you're an Instagram fitness model or whatever, it, you don't have life skills. Like what? And, and prove me wrong. If you're watching this fucking video, go ahead. Shoot me a fucking uh, a, a message or an... I'll fucking debate you on this. Show me what kind of fucking actual life skills you have. There's a few out there that actually have... There's a lot of veterans I follow on Instagram. So I don't mean you because you guys... Well, I, I know what you've been through. I've been there too. Uh, I haven't served in just one branch of the military. I'm serving in, uh, this is my second branch of the military. So I have a little bit of a, a cross branch uh, exposure slash experience slash uh, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But some of these morons, these retards, oh, I'm a high school teacher and this is my first competition and, and, and watch my progress. I got to post progress pictures every day and check out my shoulder pump and I got to get a, a custom weight belt with my name on it. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that's what you think life is about? That's what you actually, oh, look how many calories I, I, I uh, Jesus Christ. And then they want to, and then there's another one that wants to sit there and be like, oh, uh, it's not that you can't, it's not that you won't do it, it's that you can't do it. Oh, I can't cut calories? Hmm, I think I've cut calories overseas numerous times. Oh, I can't watch what I eat? I've watched what I didn't have a choice overseas. Oh, I can't cut out alcohol. Yeah, I can cut out alcohol. I've done it for eight months at a time, three fucking times. Oh, I can't, um, you know, I, I can't work out or, or, or I don't have the drive to do it. Yeah. Cause my life goals differ than yours. You dumb bitch. Like I don't, <laughs> it's okay. If you want to go home after your part-time job and, and sit on a fucking couch with your dog and take selfies about how miserable and hungry you are. That's not my life goals, and that shouldn't be anybody else's life goals. Jesus, I'm sorry for that rant, but Christ, these people they they don't have they don't have the the right I I don't know uh, uh, their their vision on life is fucked. Like, and then they want to, and my 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 problem is I wouldn't be saying any of this if it wasn't that they said something first. Like, I don't care what you do in your in life. I don't I don't care if you want to you know hide in your basement. And uh, and never leave your parents' house like that dude that just got uh, court ordered to leave his parents' house. That thirty-year-old guy, like that was what he wanted to do, but somebody else had a problem with it. Hey, I don't fucking blame the guy. The guy wants to fucking live in his parents' basement for however long. Go go ahead, have at it. I just I I don't I just don't get these people that they live a certain way. They live a certain way. They live a certain type of lifestyle, but then they have to put it on other people. Like, like, what's it to you? Even me, like, I don't, I'm actually jealous of the guy 
that they go to McDonald's every day, that they don't care about their weight. They don't care about their, uh, you know, their, their physical looks or whatever it might be. It's because like, I kind of wish I had that. I wish I wasn't so insecure about my body that I have to, or that I didn't have a, a military career where I had to stay in shape to go to certain schools or, or reach specific performance levels. Like I'm, I actually envy those people that they, they, they have that, that they don't care factor. I've never had that in my entire life. I've always been worried about what I look like, what people think of me, what girls think of me, uh, what my performance level was. It was always a competition. I get butterflies before my fitness test twice a year. I get, and I know I'm going to do, I know I'm going to pass, but it's just the, the expectations that I have of, of myself. And then the expectations that other people have of me. And that's always come back on me. And right before they say go on that fitness test, I get butterflies in my stomach and I fucking hate it. I get nervous. I get anxiety. I do. I have anxiety. I get, I get really, I get, I get anxious about things and I can't control it, but I don't put my way of life on anybody else. And I don't think anybody else should. That's my problem with like religion and these like Jehovah's witnesses and, and, and you know, the, Oh, well, I think you should live like this. And I think that you should, you know, you should go to church and you should uh, talk to, you know, talk, whatever it might be. You should learn about that. It's like, no, that's not the way I want to live. Like, the, and to be honest, I thought that was, that, that's what America was about. You get to live your way of life. I get to live mine. As long as it's within legal statutes and you're not committing any crimes against humanity. You know, you're not going around murdering kids and, and, uh, and trapping people in a basement in Colorado for 18 years or whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Have at it. Collect Pokemon cards. Uh, play your Dragon Ball Z stuff. Um, go out and fly kites and, and, and rock climb and, and uh, or just get drunk off of whiskey every day. Do whatever you want. Just don't involve me in it. But as soon as you start calling out stupid people and, and you're stupid, you're fucking self. Yeah, I think it needs to be said. I've I've... I've always realized that there was this level of um, acceptance that people search for in life. And I, I've, been, I've been the same way. I've searched for acceptance in a lot of uh, dimensions and, and uh, moments in my life and, and periods and chapters in my life. I've, yeah, I've absolutely looked for ac- uh, acceptance. But as I've gotten older, especially in the past five years, uh, when I'm 30, I'll be 31 in August, um, that acceptance isn't important. And I realized... It took me a while to get this way because I always just wanted to blend in and just kind of go with the flow. You know, everybody was out, everybody else was flowing with the current. I wanted to, I wanted to flow with the current too, because I wanted to be accepted. But as I got older, I realized, you know what, you can go against the grain and be more, not only for popularity reasons, but you'll find out that there's a lot of people in that current and that flow and that stream and that crowd that agree with you, but they were just waiting for somebody else to say it first. So I think I'm saying this. Now, I'm not saying the names, but I think you know who you are if you actually watch this, which I doubt you will because not many people watch it. I think only 15 people watched the last video. Uh, and probably like two of them were from me. To seeing, like, I would I click on my video to see, hey, anybody else watch this? So, uh, but yeah, you know, you know who I'm talking about. But Christ, man, let it go. You're not that cool. You're not that important. And I'll say it to your fucking face uh, over over this or not over this. I don't want to sound like a rant, but or like I was angry at anybody. I'm already I'm at 53 minutes. Maybe I can change the topic in the last last six and a half minutes. But man, Donald Trump summit Singapore, and people still got to find the problem, like find something wrong with it. That was he's the first sitting president to meet with North Korea. And it was actually pretty good. I actually, I even watched that video that I guess he had made for Kim Jong Un or Kim Jong Un. Like Dennis Rodman cried. Like I was watching that interview. Dude cried because he was so happy. And uh, people had to find something wrong with it. Like, oh, Trump's an idiot. But I just saw a poll that I think it's like split down the middle, fifty fifty. Like fifty percent of the 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 people that um, attended the poll were happy with the outcome and 50 people were not. But then again, Robert De Niro said, fuck Trump at the Tony Awards. But if he said, fuck Obama, my goodness, you could imagine the outrage. Oh, he's a racist or, uh, you know, he, he's uh, 
uh, he wants to overthrow the government, whatever it might be. But no, you can say fuck, fuck Trump, and and you get people that applaud it, and people that somebody said that he should get a Nobel Prize for that. Like, why would you not want Trump, regardless of of your political views or whether you like him or not? But he is the president. Whether you say he's not my president, that's just that's the most absurd. Fuck. Uh, oh God, that whole not my president thing. Uh, not my president. Uh, the grass isn't green and the the sky isn't blue. Well, I'm sorry. You can believe it's whatever color you want, but if if you're colorblind, I get it. But uh, you can't tell me you're not breathing oxygen because Donald Trump is president. He's the elected president of the United. That's a fact. He will go down to history as the 45th president. Like that's you you stupid shit. But either way, regardless of your political views, opinions, and beliefs. Why would you not want the president of your country to succeed? That's the by far the stupidest fucking thing. Uh, you want you should want this guy to succeed. If he succeeds, it's a win for everybody. And but if you want him, if you don't agree with Trump and you you want him to fail because he's Trump and you just don't like him, then you're asking the whole country to fail. You're you're essentially asking yourself to fail. Like if he fails, you fail. If 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 he fails, you fail. I fail. You, you know, your your kids fail. Your friends fail. Your husband, your wife fails. That that's why would you want that? Would do you want this country to fail? And what's even crazier is that you have that ability to say that stuff. You have that 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 right and that privilege being here in America to say things like "fuck Trump" and. uh and that, and that you, you know, you want him to fail. That's just dumb. Go to North Korea. Say that about Kim Jong Un. I didn't know it was Kim Jong until I watched that Dennis Rodman thing. But yeah, say that about uh, Kim Jong Un. See how far that gets you. I bet you. I bet you those people don't have a uh, that kind of privilege to to state that opinion of, even if they believe it. Or Putin, go ahead, go to Russia, and say something bad about Putin. No, he didn't even have really any competitors in his last election. You think that's out of? Uh, <laughs> you think that's out of coincidence? It could be. It really could be. I, I don't know for sure. But I'm I'm highly expecting some some level of fear, some level of dictatorship out of that. All I'm saying is you have it made here in America. Stop being a miserable fucking bitch. Stop being miserable cunts. Stop whining about everything. Stop being miserable. Stop stop being pitiful. Not pitiful, but pitiful. Like full of pity. Oh, Jesus. Grow up. Live a life. Go get a degree. Go travel to Europe. I don't know. Go to Mexico. Sit on a beach for a while. You have that that ability as a uh, as a human being on planet Earth. But Christ, people. But anyway, all right. I think I'm going to cut this short because this must have been just an alcoholic rant. That I kind of got off. I wasn't even really planning on talking about all this bullshit. But I did. And uh, all right, yeah. Um, So, oh, I kind of hit the uh, mic stand with my headphones. All right, I'll try to get back uh, maybe this weekend. I got a long weekend coming up. Not that any of you motherfuckers are watching this shit anyway. I, I, maybe I just got to get a little bit more, um, not vulgar, but racy. I don't mean racisty. I'm just saying like edgy. Edgy? Yeah, I'll, I'll think of something. Either way, I'm not going to stop. Because this is fun, even if I'm watching the videos myself. That's fucking weird, right? Yeah, it's a little weird. All right. Well, I'll talk to you guys next time.